Hey guys, I'm Aaron Edgar, and today is going to be a little bit different. Today we're going to talk about dynamics, specifically ghost notes, and how to make them real clean and real quiet so that they have a very, very dynamic impact on what you're playing. The most important thing that you can remember with this is that your note has to start low. For example, Now, with that, it's also very good if you can have it without any backswing. I'm talking, you don't want to start the note like this. That already is a lot louder. We're just going to down, down, down. One of the hardest things to do is to make a ghost note before or after an accented note. So what you have to learn is you have to learn two specific things for that. First step is an upstroke. So after you've played your ghost note, Bring it back up. And the second is a downstroke where you're going to be playing an accent, but you're going to keep it down. Now you'll notice one thing with my accent is that I'm not burying the stick. I'm not doing that. I'm not stopping it. I'm still allowing the stick to do what it wants to do, which is bounce. Like it just wants to go. I'm letting it do that. I'm just catching it, which stops it low which makes it so that I'm completely ready to play more ghost notes. Now the other way is even a little bit harder. So we're going to take our ghost note and we're going to follow it with an accent. So we have to have a ghost note and an accent note. Now the reason why that's so hard is that you want the ghost note to not be loud on your way up. You want it to still be quiet. So the way that we're going to do that is by pretty much we're going to start at the elbow and we're going to just tap the drum on our way up to get into position for our accent note. Now you'll notice I'm employing both of the things we just talked about, where we have the unaccented note getting into the accented note, but the accented note stops without burying it, lets it bounce, but it catches it. The great thing about this is that you can use it with both hands, so you definitely want to get it happening with your left and your right. Now these are infinitely effective on the drum set, especially for, for example, using hi-hat dynamics within a groove, and for any little ghost notes that you want to play on the snare drum. One thing you're going to need to do while you're working on these is to just majorly exaggerate. So especially when you're working on stuff slow, you're going to want to just make it so your ghost notes are like less than an inch and your accents are up here. Very rarely do we need them that extreme, but being able to control them like that is gonna make it so anytime that you need them, anywhere in between that, it's a breeze. All right, so here's an exercise that goes with all the weird rhythm stuff that I like, but it also helps you work on ghost notes and positioning and accents and all that kind of stuff. You'll notice on the transcription there's a whole bunch of arrows. 
These are going to correspond with the up and down notes that we were talking about before. So remember that an up note is you're going to have your ghost note, like your quiet note, and you're going to get prepared for an accent coming up. So you're going to hit it and you're going to come back up. A downstroke is going to be coming from an accent and staying down afterwards. So for this, we're going to do just quintuplets, nice and slow. Don't even worry about a metronome yet. That can happen later. So we're going to start just alternating singles, leading with the right hand. So downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, upstroke, down. That's a lot harder than I made it look to really wrap your head around it and think about it that way. So the way I want you to work on it is take it one note at a time. You know that you have down. You get left, right, left for an upstroke, right, downstroke. Right, left, right for an upstroke, left, downstroke. And that's the full pattern. So work on it like this. I know it seems like we're going a little bit more into this than you might need to, but once you understand this stuff in this kind of detail, it's gonna change the way you think about stuff. You're gonna understand the positioning for all your dynamics and all your accents and everything's just gonna be a lot cleaner. So as usual, I hope you got something out of this. I hope this is something you can use. And uh, yeah, keep watching, subscribe. I'll see you guys later, bye.